Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. If you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching you how to make a ruffle top. For this roughly affair, we went with a Suzette stitch middle detail, a feminine scoop neck, and the aforementioned ruffle sleeves using the same Suzette stitch. Cutesy! Speaking of, look no further if you're looking for cute crochet patterns, because we've got them right here. We have hundreds of the cutest modern crochet tutorials and patterns online, with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 175 grams of yarn, and that's 250 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you are a multitasker or if you gotta do one task at a time. Now, I try my best to be a multitasker, but I do my best focusing on one task at a time. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. And double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making an even number chain the width of the base of our neck. I need a total of 5.5 inches or 12 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 18. So now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain 2. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And now we're going to put one half double crochet into every chain. So yarn over into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook. We're gonna insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. That's our first half double crochet and continue with one half double crochet into every chain. So our row one, is all finished. Now let's get started on our row two. So we're all going to chain two and flip our work. So getting started on a row two, we're all going to put one half double crochet into that first stitch. Then we're going to put one front post extended double crochet working into the row one. So we're all going to yarn over and find the second half double crochet from our previous row. We're going to bring our hook down and underneath the body of that half double crochet. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through. When we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first loop, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's how we do a front post extended double crochet. Now from here, we're going to do our Suzette stitches. So all that's going to be is a single and double crochet into that same stitch. So we're all going to start by skipping that following stitch from our previous row because this front post extended double counts as that stitch. And then into the following, we're going to insert with a single crochet. And then also with a double crochet. That is our first Suzette stitch set all finished. Let's do the next one. After every Suzette stitch set, we're always going to skip a stitch and then do a set into the next because that double crochet actually counts as that following stitch. If we work straight into there, we will be accidentally increasing. So we're going to skip one, into the following, insert with a single, and then with a double. Let's do this again. Skip that following stitch, into the next, a single, and then into that same stitch, a double, and we're going to continue to do our Suzette stitch until we all have three stitches left. So I made my way all the way down with my Suzette stitches and we should all have one, two, three stitches left. Now we're going to close off the row with a front post extended double crochet and then a half double crochet. So let's get that started. 
we're all going to yarn over. Skip that following stitch, because remember that last double crochet is going to count as that following stitch. And then taking a look at our row one, we're going to find that second to last half double crochet, not counting that chain two. So here's my first, here's my second. Insert your hook underneath the body of that stitch through the other side. Pull through, and just like how we did the other one, we're going to yarn over, pull through just one. And then when we have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then to close off the row, one half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row to keep it nice and sturdy. And now our row two is finished. Now let's get started on our row three, so let's all chain two and flip our work. So getting started on our row three, each of our odd number rows is going to start with two half double crochets. So we're going to yarn over, find that first stitch and insert with one half double, and then yarn over, insert into that second stitch with a second half double crochet. And now from here we're going to do our Suzette stitches all the way down until we have two stitches left. So after our two half doubles, we're all going to start by skipping that following stitch, and then into that next we're going to do our Suzette stitch. So there's a single and a double. And a really quick tip, each of our Suzette stitch sets are now going to be worked into our previous row's single crochet stitch to get to the texture that we want. So we're going to skip that following stitch and we can tell that it's a double crochet from our previous row because it's a little bit taller than the following. So skip that stitch into the next, a single and a double, and I'll meet you back when we have two stitches left. So we are back, we should all have one, two stitches left, and now we're going to close off this row with a half double crochet. So yarn over, skip that following stitch, and into the stitch right after that, insert with a half double, and now our odd number row is finished. Now let's just get started on the following two rows together, so let's all chain two and flip our work just once more. So all together we should have one, two, three rows. So let's get started on a row four, which is going to be the same for every even number row. We're always going to start with one half double crochet into that first stitch. Next we're going to do our front post extended double crochet, but we're going to now be working it into our previous even number row. So let's all yarn over once, find that first front post extended double crochet from our previous even number row, and then insert your hook underneath the body of that stitch, and then do our front post extended double per usual. So when we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through just the first, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's that. Now getting started on our Suzette stitches, always skip that following stitch because this front post extended double counts as that stitch, and then into that following, which should also be a single crochet from our previous row, insert with our Suzette stitch. And now I will meet you back when we have two stitches left. We are nearly finished with our row four, we should all have one two stitches left, and now we're going to do our front post extended double again, so yarn over, insert your hook underneath that previous even number rows, front post extended double, we're going to pull through, yarn over, pull through one, pull through two, and then pull through two. And then to close off our row, one half double crochet into that last stitch, and let's just do our row five together, so chain two and flip. So each of our odd number rows is going to start off the same as well. We're going to start with two half double crochets. So one into that first stitch, and then one into that following stitch, and then our Suzette stitches. So skip a stitch, and into the following, a single and double, and continue this until we have two stitches left again. We've made our way down, we should all have one, two stitches left, and now we're going to finish off this row with a half double crochet. So yarn over, into that last stitch, with one half double, and that's it, our first five rows are complete. From here it's going to be a repeat of rows four and five. So placing this first half double crochet row where we want the bottom of this top to be, so you can make this cropped or full length, and we're going to continue on with rows four and five until this reaches about mid chest, because we need to leave some space for our collar because we will have a boat neck. I'll meet you back right after we finish up an even number row. I am back and I have just finished up the length of my Suzette stitch detail. I have a total of 42 rows and my length is just about 15 inches or 38 centimeters. And now before we get started on the side panels, we're just going to single crochet along the edges to clean it up. So from where we're at, since we all should have ended right after an even number row, we're all going to chain one and then we're going to single crochet along the edge. So we're going to be alternating between one to two single crochet into every side row. 
So to get this started, this is my first side row right here. I'm going to insert my hook with just one single crochet. This is my following side row. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So there's one and there's two. Let's do that again. This is my following side row. Find that top loop, insert with one, find that following side row, find that top loop, and insert with two. And that's it. We're going to continue this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll show you where to insert your hook for the other side. So my single crochet row along the left side of my detail is all finished, and we're now going to do the right side. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the bottom of our piece, so into the corner where our tail end is, and then we're going to repeat. We're doing it this way so that it shows the front of the single crochets to get the cleanest look. So just insert your hook into this bottom corner stitch, and then alternate between one to two single crochets, making our way all the way up. We should have the same amount of single crochets on both sides, and once we make our way all the way down, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I am back. My single crochet row along both sides of our Suzette stitch detail is all finished, and now we're gonna get started on our side panel. Now our side panel isn't gonna be reversible, so we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of the right side first. So into the corner of the single crochet that we just did. We are all going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain two. That chain two does not count as a stitch, and we're just gonna make our way all the way down, putting one half double crochet into every stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into that following stitch, and if you're like me, you have some tail ends, go ahead and place that over your hook so that you don't need to weave them in later, and then half double crochet around everything. Let's do that again, yarn over, into that next stitch, making sure that your tail ends are still placed over your hook, and half double. Continue with your half double crochets until you're set into the row. So my half double crochet row is finished, and our falling row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So at the end of our half double crochet row, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So all we're gonna do is find that last stitch from our previous row, insert that into that back loop. Yarn over, gently pull through everything. Again, into that next stitch's back loop, insert, yarn over, and pull through both loops. And continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And just as a really quick tip, make sure that you're not tugging too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the falling row can be a little too tight to work into. So I've made my way all the way down with my back loop slip stitch row. And now from here, we're just gonna alternate between a back loop half double and back loop slip stitch row until we reach mid collarbone. So just to get started on our back loop half double crochet row, chain two and flip your work. We're all gonna yarn over, find that first stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop with a back loop half double crochet and continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, Flip your work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and like I said, continue to repeat those two rows until this portion can stretch over to mid collarbone, and I will meet you back right after a back loop half double crochet row is finished. So I am back and I have just finished up my side panel. I have a total of five rows, that's not including our first single crochet row, so just to count that out together, here's one, two, three, four, five, and we all should have ended right after back loop half double crochet row. So now what we're gonna do is make a chain that reaches all the way up to the top of our shoulder. I needed just about four inches or 10 centimeters. So I made a chain of 17 and now we're going to continue on with our same row sequence. So our falling row is going to be a slip stitch row. Block off that last chain, do a chain one and flip your work. We're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. Go ahead and insert, yarn over and gently pull through everything. That's our first slip stitch. And we're gonna continue with our slip stitches down our chain, and then one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're going to chain two, flip our work, and then continue on with our back loop half double crochet row. And we're just gonna continue to do this until this side panel that we have can now stretch over to the corner of our underarm, and I'll meet you back right after a back loop slip stitch row. All right, so I am back and my shoulder portion is all finished. I have a total of three shoulder rows, 
So in total, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows, because remembering, we're not counting that first single crochet row. And my width is now seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. Now what we're going to do from here is our underarm. So first thing we're going to have to do is insert our stitch marker into any stitch that we have from the top that's nearest to the corner of our underarm. I inserted my stitch marker into the 18th stitch from the top, and that's just about four inches or 10 centimeters. Now from here, since we should all be along the bottom, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we are two stitches right before our stitch marker. So I made my way all the way down with my back loop half double crochet row and left two stitches right before my stitch marker. And now we're going to do a decrease of two back loop half doubles. So yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last back loop, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four of those loops. Now we're at the end of this row, so getting started on our following back loop slip stitch row, that's gonna start with a decrease as well. So chain one and flip your work. Now to do a decrease of two back loop slip stitches, find the last stitch from our previous row and insert into that back loop, pull through into that following stitches back loop. When we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and that's it. From here, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, we're gonna to continue to repeat these two previous rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that ends on a decrease of two, and then a back loop slip stitch row that starts with a decrease of two until we have an underarm portion that can stretch over to mid underarm, making sure that we end right after a half double crochet row. When we have that finished, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back so we can finish up the other side of the front panel. All right, so I am back. The entirety of one side of my front panel is all finished. I have a total of 13 rows, remembering that's not counting our first single crochet row. My width for this portion is three and a half inches or nine centimeters, or my total width is eight and a half inches or 22 centimeters. Now we're going to do the same thing, same idea at least, on the other side, but it's not gonna be done exactly the same way because the ribbing that we have isn't reversible. So getting started on the left side, what we're going to do is insert our hook into the top corner stitch now of our Suzette stitch detail. And then for this portion, it's going to be an exact repeat of the width of our neckline. So it's just going to be a half double crochet row and then back loop slip stitch and back loop half double crochet rows for the same amount of rows that we have on this side. Now I will be ending along the bottom for this side. So I'll meet you back once we have that amount of rows finished up so I can show you how we're gonna be doing the shoulder on this side as well. So I am back and I have just finished up the neckline portion of this other front panel. I now have a total of nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters. And now from here, we're gonna get started on the shoulder. Now our last half double crochet row should have all ended along the bottom. So I just took out a little bit of slack and I reinserted my hook into the top. We don't need to do a chain up one and cut unless if you want more tail ends to weave in, but that's completely up to you. I just inserted my hook into this top corner stitch. I'm going to take the other end of my yarn and then all I'm gonna do is make a chain for the same amount of chains that I made that led all the way up to my shoulder. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain 17. So from here, I'm going to make a chain 17 as well. Now after my chain 17, I did do a chain up of one and cut. Now I'm going to reinsert my hook into the bottom corner stitch, which is where my working yarn should be. And then I'm gonna continue on with my shoulder portion. So our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, making our way all the way up. And then once we reach our chain, put one slip stitch into every chain. Then a back loop half double crochet row and a back loop slip stitch row, both with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as this first shoulder portion right over here. And once we finish up the shoulder portion, we will be ending along the top. So do a chain up of one and cut once we have the same amount of rows and then I'll meet you back so I can talk you guys through how we're going to do the underarm. So I'm back, I have just finished up my second shoulder portion and now we're gonna get started on our underarm. Now, two things before we get started. We should have all ended along the top right after our last slip stitch row. We should have done a chain up a one and cut. And also we wanna make sure that we know the amount of stitches that we have for this last shoulder row. Now it should be the same amount of stitches as our shoulder rows on this side, but we're going to need to know how many stitches we have so we can get started on the back panel once when we get there. So just keep that in mind. But once we do have this, we're all going to insert our stitch marker into the same amount of stitches that we inserted into for this side over here. For those of you that have my numbers, I inserted my stitch marker into the 18th stitch. 
So I did the same thing on this side and now we're gonna get started on this underarm portion. So let's all start by turning our work so we're looking at the side. And then we're going to insert our hook into the stitch that's nearest to our stitch marker, but working down towards the bottom. We're gonna insert our hook in through that back loop and start with a decrease of two back loop half doubles. We're all going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain two, but this chain two doesn't count as a stitch, we just need the height. And what we're gonna do from here is yarn over and inserting our hook into that same back loop that our chain two is in, we're gonna insert, pull through into that following stitch, insert, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four, and then from here, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two just so we can decrease into our slip stitch row together once more. All right, so we finished up our back loop half double crochet row, made our way back up with our back loop slip stitch row and left the last two stitches. Now we're gonna do another decrease of two back loop slips. So insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that next back loop, then yarn over, pull through all three, and that's it. From here, we're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as the first underarm portion that we did for the other side. Then we're gonna do a chain up of one and cut, and then the entirety of our front panel is gonna be all finished. I am back, and the total width of my front panel is now finished. I have a total of 11 and a half inches or 29 centimeters unstretched. And now we're gonna get started on our back panel. So I have the main portion of my back panel already finished. I'm just gonna talk you guys through it. So what we're going to do is start by making a chain for the same amount of stitches that we have for our last shoulder row. Now we should have all kept that in mind with the last clip that I mentioned, but once we have that chain, we're going to chain one, do a slip stitch row, because we want the first and last row to match the front panel's first and last row for our shoulder. Those are slip stitch rows as well. We're gonna do a slip stitch row and then just do back loop half double and back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until the width that we have is roughly the same width that we have from first shoulder row all the way across to our last shoulder row. I have a total of 33 rows for my back panel. That's just about eight inches or 20 centimeters. And just placing my front panel on top of my back panel, you guys can see that it's roughly that same width. And once we have that, we can get started on our underarm portion. The first underarm portion is going to be done the same exact way that the first underarm portion for the front panel was done as well. So this should be pretty easy for everyone. All right, I am back. My first underarm portion for my back panel is all finished. I have a total of nine inches or 23 centimeters unstretched. And to do the second underarm, it's going to be done exactly the same as the second underarm for the front panel. So as a refresher, we are still gonna be inserting our stitch marker into the same amount of stitches that we inserted into for the front panel and for this first underarm portion over here. So for me, 18. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into that next available stitch that we have that's next to our stitch marker, but going towards the bottom. We're gonna insert your hook in through there and then start with a half double crochet row. That starts with a decrease of two at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and ends on a decrease of two as well. Continue to repeat those two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as all of our other underarm portions. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. So I am back. The entirety of my back panel is now finished. I have a total of 10 inches or 25 centimeters unstretched and now we're ready to seam everything together. So let's grab our front panel and flip everything wrong side out. So what I mean by wrong side out is placing the front panel on top of our back panel. We're gonna make sure that we're looking at the back and then laying down the back panel, we're gonna make sure that the ribbing is faced up towards us so that the outside is faced each other. We're then going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel and then we're going to single crochet our shoulders together. Let's all start by inserting our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're gonna put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, two single crochet into every side half double crochet row until we don't have any more side rows within the front panel left to work into. So let's find that first side row within the front panel. It should be a side slip stitch row for everyone. So there's my front panel. This is my first side slip stitch row for the back panel. So I'm gonna insert my hook in through that top loop and single crochet. This is my following side row, which is a side half double. Should be the same for everyone again. So insert your hook into that top loop within the front, same top loop within the back, 
and single crochet. And since this is a side half double crochet row, it's a little bit wider. So we're going to be putting one more single crochet into those same top loops. So into that same top loop within the front, same top loop within the back. It should be a little bit easier since they should be connected already and single crochet. And that's it. We're just going to continue to do that, making our way all the way down. And when we don't have any more side rows left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side. So we are back and both of our shoulders are all seamed up. So now we're ready to seam up our sides. So how that's going to work is we're going to flip our work right side out now, meaning the ribbing that we have is faced up towards us. And therefore the detail for the front panel is faced away from us. We're then going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel then insert your yarn onto your hook. We are going to do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel. We're going to insert our hook only into that front loop again into that next available stitch into the back panel. Only insert your hook into that back loop. Then when we have those three loops, just yarn over and pull through all three loops. Let's do this again into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop, next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, then yarn over, pull through all three and that's it. Continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't do a chain up one and cut and then repeat on the other side. So now that everything is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to do is our collar. So we're going to make sure the work is still flipped right side out, right side up. And then we're going to insert our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the neckline of the back panel. We are then going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side slip and two single crochet into every side half double. So getting that started, we're going to find our first side row. Mine is a side slip stitch row. I'm going to insert into that top loop with just one single crochet. Now my following side row is a side half double. We're going to insert into there with two single crochets. So there's one and there's two and that's basically it. We're going to continue to put one single crochet into every side slip, two single crochet into every side half double. And then once we reach the front, we are going to have some regular stitches to work into. So we're just going to be putting one single crochet into each of those. I will meet you back once when we have made our way all the way around and then slip stitch into that chain space. Alrighty, so I am back. We have just finished up our single crochet row and now we're going to get started on the length of our collar. So right after we slip stitched into that chain space, we're all going to start by making a chain the length that we'd like for our collar to be. I'd like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain five. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off the last chain, do a chain one and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook insert with a slip stitch. So insert yarn over and gently pull through everything and continue with one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to connect it into the base. So find that next available stitch into the base and insert with a slip stitch and that slip stitch does not count as a stitch. That's just to connect it. And we need to work our way up to the following row. So into that next available stitch into the base, we're going to insert with another slip stitch still doesn't count as a stitch and flip our work. And then from here, we're going to be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding that next stitch is back loop insert, gently pull through everything. Next stitch is back loop, gently pull through everything. Continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch to reach the end of the row. When we do do a chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And I'll meet you back at the base just once more. So we are back and we should have one, two, three rows nearly finished. We're going to connect it into the base by finding that next available stitch, slip stitch it into there. All of our slip stitches into the base don't count as a stitch. And to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work and then repeat with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We're going to continue to do our back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And when we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. So I am back. I have made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into. So now we're going to seam everything together. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. 
making sure that our work is still flipped right side out. And we're gonna yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And now we're going to do the same seam that we did for the sides, so an outside loop slip stitch seam. Let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. First stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. Yarn over and pull through everything. And that's it. Continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our collar is all finished, the last thing we're going to do is our sleeves. So we're all gonna make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the last stitch that we have, right where our side seam is, and we're gonna start with a single crochet. So we're all going to chain one, and we're gonna put two single crochets into every side half double, one single crochet into every side slip, and then one single crochet into every stitch. So just to do the first side row, which is a side half double crochet row for everyone, find that top loop and insert with one single crochet into that same top loop, since it is a side half double, a second single crochet. Then our following side row is a side slip stitch row, so insert your hook in through there with a single crochet as well. And that's basically it. We're gonna continue on with our single crochets, making our way all the way up and around. Well, we don't have any more stitches left, slip stitch into that chain space. So our single crochet row is finished up, and now we're gonna get started on our Suzette ruffle sleeves, and we're going to be increasing into every fourth row. So we're gonna start this row off with an increase, then three Suzette stitch rows with no increases, and the following row is going to be another increase, but, but all the increased rows are gonna be done exactly the same. So getting started on our first increase row, we're all going to chain one. And since we already know how to do our Suzette stitches, what we're going to do is just do the first set. So a single and a double into that first stitch. Once when I have that first set all finished up, we are still going to skip one stitch like we typically do. And then after that, we're going to have two Suzette stitch sets right next to each other. So skip one into that following stitch, a single and a double, and then into that Next stitch, we are not skipping a stitch, another single, and then another double. And then from here, it's going to be a repeat. So skip a stitch into the following, a, oops, single, and a double. And before we get started on our increase Suzette stitch section, which are the two Suzette stitches right next to each other, what I like to do to keep track of how many Suzette stitch sets I have is insert a stitch marker into the singular Suzette stitch sets. So into the first one that we made, we're gonna be skipping over the increase ones because there's two right next to each other. And then into that following, insert a stitch marker into there as well. And that is basically it for the increase. Let's do another set together and let you finish up the row on your own. So right after our singular Suzette stitch set, we're going to skip a stitch and then into that following stitch, we're going to do one Suzette stitch set. So a single and a double into the same stitch and then into that following stitch, so you will not be skipping a stitch, a single and a double. And then right after that, we're going to do a singular Suzette stitch set. So right after those two right next to each other, skip a stitch into the next, a single and a double, and don't forget to insert your stitch marker into the body of that singular Suzette stitch set, just so we know where to keep track of everything. And that's it. We're gonna continue this until we reach the end of the row, and everyone's numbers are gonna be a little bit different, but for everyone, I will meet you back when we have one or two stitches left. If you have one or two, you are not wrong. I'll meet you guys back. So I made my way all the way around with my increase row, which was our row two. And now we're going to close it off with one half double crochet into the last stitch. So yarn over. If you have two stitches left, you're going to skip that second to last stitch and half double crochet into that last stitch. Or if you have just one stitch left, just half double crochet into that last stitch. So insert with a half double. And that's it. To close off the row, we're going to slip stitch into that chain space, chain one, and flip our work. And we do want to make sure that we are flipping our work. And now for the following three rows, we're going to be doing our Suzette stitch sets, but with no increases and no decreases. So just to do the first set with you, find that last stitch from our previous row, which should be the top of that half double crochet, and insert with a single and a double crochet. Skip that following stitch into the next, a single double. Skip a stitch into that following stitch, a single double. We're gonna be doing three of those rows with no increases and no decreases. When we have those three rows finished, I will meet you back just to remind you how to do the increase row once more. All right, so I am back and I have my first one, that's my first single crochet row, 
two, three, four, five rows finished. And now we're gonna get started on our row six, which is a repeat of our row two. I already have my first set all finished up, so I'm just gonna talk you guys through it. Right after our three Suzette stitch rows with no increases and no decreases, our falling row is going to be an increase row. We're gonna start with a singular Suzette stitch set, skip a stitch, and then into the following two stitches, one Suzette stitch set into each. Skip another stitch, and then another singular Suzette stitch set. And don't forget to insert your stitch markers into the singular Suzette stitch sets, and then make your way all the way around. Then after that, three Suzette stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. Then we're going to continue to repeat these four rows until we get the length of the sleeve that we want. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. So we are back. I have just finished up the entirety of my sleeve. I have a total of 17 rows, and that's just about 5 inches or 13 centimeters. Once we have one side done, we're going to repeat everything that we just did here on the other side, and then once we do, we are all finished. Last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it, y'all. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!